also is the word Israel. The word Israel within Hebrew means he who ascends to God. So remember, Superman is able to ascend to God. What is his God? His God is the sun. You don't get this? This is no coincidence. His God is the sun. For Superman to have his superpowers, he must get what? The rays of the sun. You as a melanated person must get what? Sun. sun. Is that a coincidence? Because you must get that light filled air. Yes. Uh, when you mentioned Superman, uh, a child was asked once, uh, they asked how, uh, well, they were asked a child, how was the pyramid, I mean, how did the stones get all the way up to the top of the pyramid that, that you know, the, the, what, 2,000 tons? How did it get? And the child said, We left it uh, the next thing is also the child said that uh, we was able the, to use the technology got within them and, 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 and rose them up. The right. child said that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll give a good example. We had laser technology, all right, and this has been proven scientifically based on archaeology and anthropology. So they had that technology, as well as also we had the technology of levitation or gravitational um, pull. Right? Yes, brother. Let's get. I was gonna say, and also the archangels. Right. But you also say those are frequencies of light. That's what they are. Right. Which is why Akhenaten took it away from that vibes right. Right. and focus on the. We can see the sun rays coming the right the into the pineal, pineal gland. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. I hope hope y'all heard him. All right. Because once again, here at the subconscious level, we have. Raphael. Raphael. Right here we have Samael. Here we have Gimiel. Right here we have Uriel. Uriel. So, these are the archangels, which is nothing more than a different state of consciousness, which is actually angles of light. The word archangel means light in which there are arcs, arcs will. The arc is the head. Within the woman, it symbolizes the belly. That was the arc in which that Noah had in the rain 40 days and 40 nights. He's talking about the woman. Uh, molding and shaping the child in her womb for 40 weeks. Da -da. <laughs> Da -da. <laughs> so the 40 weeks was symbolic to the 40 days and 40 nights of Noah. The word Noah means mind. Well, guess what? This is no question that this is referred to as the abdominal brain. Scientists have found that neurons exist in the small and large and colon area of the body. Just like neurons exist within the brain. So Noah's Ark is the woman Ark of life, which is the stomach. This is why it came in pairs. The woman have two breasts, which symbolizes the two animals that came on the ship by pairs. <laughs> two animals came on the ship together. And it was male and female. Well, guess what? The women normally or will have fraternal twins or identical twins. It would be male or female. You see this? So it's no coincidence that the 40 days and 40 nights is the 40 weeks in which that the child is formed within the womb of the mother. And then the water breaks, just like 40 days and 40 nights, the rain stopped. Cause it finally broke. Oh, when the rain stops, what we call it? You say, oh, the rain just broke. Well, guess what? The water breaks and the child comes where? To shore. From out of the darkness to the light. Because the triple stage darkness is the three trimester periods within a woman. The first three months, the second three months, the third three months. Three times three is what? Nine. Nine. This is what I mean. Learn the human anatomy. These biblical stories, these Quranic stories, is talking about you. 
here at this day and time? What would be the purpose of me having to teach you about Moses 4,000 years ago and he split the Red Sea? And you don't know the esoteric information concerning the human anatomy, which is the most important because that's what you're dealing with here and now. The ancients knew that. That's what he encoded it in stories. So that as you grew in consciousness, you would be able to read those stories in a whole different mindset because now you are not dealing at interpersonal consciousness. Now you're dealing with magnetic or infinite consciousness. So now you can see those stories in a whole different light. Yes. When you, when you, when you, when you directly towards the body as a criteria for understanding, uh, uh, I read somewhere where the black woman, uh, I think it was a black astronaut who went out and out of space and yeah. studied her. Yes. And, did, and she didn't lose nope. the muscle mass and nope. bone as exactly. her a white counterpart. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So there you go right there. Exactly. I think it might went up. And this is the reason why they allegedly... It went up. I think it was actually activated. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So that doesn't happen to the sister because she is the original. I'll give you a story. Get the book Zulu Bone Oracle and Muata and uh, Credo Mutua was interviewed. Anybody know Credo Mutua, South African shaman? Yeah. Okay, if not, go in, do some research on him. David Icke always interview him, but he got more information than David Icke um, revealed. All right, now go and check that out. Zulu Bone Oracle. In the book, Credo Mutua states that originally we came from the sixth, from the, um, from the sixth planet. That actually was the sixth time that we jumped, put it that way. And we came from the red planet. The red planet is Mars. Okay? It's Mars. Now, he said that we was once on the surface of the Earth on Mars. Now, this is no coincidence because um, the Viking mission 1 and 2 of 1976 and 77 found the site of Sidona. All right? In which that they found a face, all right, on Mars. That face is actually a female. All right? And they also found um, um, pyramids. And, and roads and all types of structures on Mars, all right? You don't believe me? Do your research. Uh, I think and Tom they, Van Flanden uh, has a book on it. Right, also David Childress, also um, 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 Richard Hoagland, he spoke about it, who's a, um, a former NASA advisor, if I'm not mistaken. He's a doctor, he, he's spoken about it. So this is what we find out. Okay, this this is what we find out. So, yes. Uh, in mainstream media, they're conditioning the whole population to understand that there was life on Mars, but now right. they're saying that something happened where it right. went away and there is water on Mars. Right. But, but now they're conditioning everybody to understand that life is on Mars, and what that does is blows away a lot of Christian concepts. Right. Well, they have to tell the truth because remember that's the day and time that we in. All right, and the ancients, I mean, we have ancients, I mean, even up until recent, we, Honorable Elijah Muhammad spoke that there was um, seven planets out of the nine that had life on it, and he spoke about life on Mars. All right, so how he knew about this, you know, from the 1930s to the 1970s, you know, and this is before, you know, um, Richard Hoagland, this is before, you know, Creed Moutois spoke about it in a sense, even though Credo Mutual have been around for a, look, for a minute, you know what I'm saying? But before we probably seen any information from out of South Africa on this topic. But the thing is, is that in the book, he says that the woman, the man impregnated a woman and the woman was able to transform her body into a ship. It was called the Makab. We refer to it within Hebrew as the Makaba. If you go to the Old Testament in the book of, um, of, um, um, Elijah, Elijah was taken up on a flaming chariot. Mm -hmm. The translation for the word chariot or flaming chariot was the word makava. Makava. And that the Kabbalistic Merkaba mystics. Merka, right, Merkaba. Right? They referred it also as Merkaba or Makaba. Now, he said the woman in South Africa today is still referred to as Makab. Mm. She still is referred to today in South Africa as Macau. Now that's no coincidence. And guess what else Twitter, on, on Credo Motois states? Mm. He say that 
when the men impregnated the women and the woman was able to transform her body into um, a ship of light and she came here to earth the surface got blown away because of a catastrophe in which that took place in the solar system well if you read um, people in up the earth if I'm not mistaken and there's another book oh man I can't remember the title but the Montauk um, books speak about it by Peter Moon and Al Bielik. But Black in, Sun. Black Sun. Thank you, baby. And this also called Val Valerian. It's called Matrix. Matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. In those particular books, in particular 2, right, he talks about um, various um, aliens or extraterrestrials. But we're more concerned about us. So we find out is that those women that came here is the ones who produced life upon this planet, all right? And now they are referred to today in South Africa as Amazulu. The word Amazulu means sky people. Amazulu means sky people. So that's no coincidence, all right? And Creed Moutois tells us about that because they came from the sky. This is where we get the term Anunnaki, this is where we get the um, term of Igigi. Um, in particular, the Anunnaki came down from out of the heaven to earth. Zachariah Sinchin speak about the Anunnaki within the 12th planet. And some of his other books. But in particular, the 12th planet. Alright? Now, the word Anunnaki, if you understand, there's two correlations. It speaks about those who came down from out of the sky to earth. And it also speak about the fact of something that's in you and which that raises from out of the earth, which is from here back into the heavens. All right? The word Anunnaki means, Anu means on high. The word Naki means serpent. So it's the serpent on high. Now when you see the ancient Kemites or Kemites or Egyptians or referred to as we say the Tamarians or Tamarians, the energy of the serpent comes up on high and it bows over top of the head right here to the sixth sense or chakra. That is the serpent on high. Earth, Wind, and Fire in 1977 speaks of what? Serpentine Fire. The Serpentine Fire on their album All in All. And on that album, that was the most important, well, one of the most important or uh, most played songs was serpentine fire all right now when i started talking about this back in the early 2000s actually i was talking about it back in the early 19 um 1990s um but when the videos came out and we was doing taping and we doing um vhs tapes at the time earth when the fire had my tapes and they wrote me on facebook and was thanking me for teaching on the information because they sung it so they was able to sing it, and of course music is universal, but most people didn't even catch on to what they were talking about. This is why they did the album covers with UFOs and pyramids and you know all these bright colors and everything like that, because they were trying to get us to understand that this is about us. Okay? This is what they're trying to understand. Alright? So, um, no, oh, I was using the wrong one, I think. Oh no, this okay, this this is that. Oh, okay, okay. If you run out of chalk. Oh, yeah, I'm about running out. Okay, but, yes. Is that why the uh, this group called Socialization System and Certification System is neutralizing our children's ability to excel? Yeah. Is that and, why and they called it as right. information here? Right, they're doing Ritalin, um, in which that allegedly is for um, ADHA, which is um, Attention Deficit Disorder. Uh, you know, or ADD as they also refer to it as. Um, this this is them trying to sterilize our children's thoughts and keep them in an obedient state. So that's what Ritalin does, is keep them in an obedient state. All right, that's, that's one of the problems. Um, then you have genetically modified foods, or Frankenstein foods, which is called GMOs, which is produced by Monsanto and of course, they produce also what is called the Terminator seed. But in the GMO food, what they have done 
is actually use the food to reinsert new information into your DNA. That's why it's called GMO. O means organism. That means organism means there's something living. What is that something living is doing to you if you eat it? It is genetically modifying you. Modifying you for what? To be obedient. To be acceptable of their mind control. To be obedient to actually using you as a perpetual incarnator. Because they, because now they are trying to make so-called slaves. And so they want to be able to have you to come back perpetually and be their slave. But they only want a certain amount of people. Alright? You notice what happened with Prince. Prince started coming out, being that he had millions and millions of followers. They had to kill him. Alright? We talked to an FBI agent just this past week. Matter of fact, this past weekend. Thank you. Just this past weekend. And guess what he told us? He said they're coming at you and killing you, all right, if you have over 100,000 followers. Luckily, we have about 30. <laughs> are you okay? All right. <laughs> and luckily, you are inspiring people to apply right. the information to become their own messiah. Right, right. Okay. So he it's told me this. He said they'll come after you so if you have over 100,000 um, people following you. This is what happened to Dr. York. So people can look at what's up to and you and you get food and whatever. They either going to kill you or you can put you in jail or maim you. You get a 10-minute presentation. You think they want this? You want you think they want you to know that this is talking about you? No. Everything I'm teaching you right now is not found in a book. This is information on which that I've read from hundreds and thousands of books over 25 years. And I put this information together. From all these various books, this is why I've been naming all these books that I'm getting the information from, so that you can go back and do the same thing. And you might catch something that I missed. But now you got a basis to go on. You understand? Yes. Sir. yes. You might be asking me what the numbers 9, 7, and 6 mean to you? Um, it's a Kabbalistic. Um, you know, if you get the book um, by Gumphrey God Godwin, um, my wife have a copy. It's called the Kabbalistic Encyclopedia. Get that book. No, it, no. Is that, yeah, that's yeah, the name. Yeah, Kabbalistic Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. It'll break down what those right. frequencies get, mean. Right, get that book. And every time that you see a particular number, open that book and see what that means to you. All right? Because some of us have been seeing um, um, 11 11. Some of us have been seeing uh, 144. Some of us have been seeing um, 222. Or three three three. For your birthday. What is 330? You know what I'm saying? Three three zero. What is that? Three three zero. Mm -hmm. Well, numerology. See, sometimes we do numerology is a little bit different than gematria, which is based on the Kabbalah. All right. Now, in numerology, three 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 will break down into understanding of the number six, which is equality. But the number six also symbolizes carbon. Which is like we was talking about earlier about on the sixth day, Adam came into existence. All right. Um, of course, when we translate it, it states that it's Friday. But understand that even though we say Friday is the sixth day, understand is that once again it's carbon. Carbon is the sixth element on the periodical chart. So it's something in which that is dealing with the life aspect because we are all carbon beings. So it's dealing with the life aspect in some regard. All right, so um, I would check it out. Get the book Kabbalistic um, Encyclopedia by Godwin and see what these numbers mean because they have a whole list of some of the different meanings. And of course, based on your dreams or based on you seeing it at certain times, you will get the interpretation that's right for you. All right, I can't give you per se the interpretation. Right, because I don't know exactly when these things happen, what you was going through, or when you seen it. Because this is something personally for you, so that you can pick up. Okay? Question. We got two more minutes. Yes. Yeah, kid. Um, 
Not saying that we ain't going to keep going on, but I only got two minutes on the camera. Well, you're going to break. We're going to break so people right. can build and patronize. Gotcha. And okay. Yes, brother. Yeah, first, I just want to give thanks for that coming forward. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I love your words throughout the years. Thank you. And um, you, you had a couple of lectures a while ago that really resonated with me on the whole comedic and Islamic connections. Um, yeah, right. and, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know if you can just expound upon some of that. Yes. As far because you already touched the breathing. Right. But as far as the yoga postures and exercises right. in um, in in rhythm with the mm -hmm. movements of the sun, of the sun. and right. how those affect the pineal and of course the kundalini, right? Right. Well, the sun salutations is what the brothers talking about of yoga. In the sun salutation, um, at first you're low to the ground, and then symbolically that symbolizes Heru or the horizon. You come, the sun coming up over the horizon, and then you are in an upright position by the time of noon, symbolically. Then you go back down into um, downward dog position slash, you know, cobra position or however you want to do it. Sometimes it's doing the rising, sometimes it's doing the setting. It depends on the way in which that you do it. But what happens is that in the sun salutation we find out is that that is actually symbolically um, the Holy Quran or the movements of the, of the word Holy Bible and the word Holy Quran, which I'll show you. And Salat. Right, in the word salat. The word salat do not mean, as we've been told by the Arabs, does not mean the word salat. Let me put that here. All right, that's an A, y'all. The word salat do not mean worship. The word salat means fire. In fact, it means raise fire. That's what Salat means. The same thing when Muslims do this. Allah, you like Ma? Well, first they start in Kiyam, which is standing. Then they do attack bear. Allah, you like Ma? Then they go to Kiyam. Then they go to Ruku. Then they go down to um, Jelsa. Then they put their head to the floor, which is um, Saja. Then they come back up. That is the same, almost exactly the same as the sun salutation in yoga. Symbolically to the sun positions. Okay? Understand what's going on. So the word Salat means raise fire. Alright? The Hebrew word is called Shalat. If you go to um, Psalms 46, you will see the word Shalah, as well as through many different That's Psalms and different Psalms. passages, you see the word mm -hmm. Shalah, but they never define what Shalah means. It says they, the rock. Huh? One of them says the rock. The rock, right. But the rock is actually talking about your pineal gland. That's the rock. That's called the philosopher's stone. You know? So it's telling you to raise fire to the rock which is to the pineal gland. And that's why your head is on the floor in Saja. This is why your head is on the floor in the sun salutation. Because you are allowing the blood to flow to the brain now. So Muslims get this little dark scar here on the forehead. And that little dark scar symbolizes the activation of the third eye. Okay? Just, just check it out. This is just symbology, y'all. Now the Bible speaks of making Salat or Shalat three times a day. The Quran speaks of it, well the Quran speaks of it three times a day too, but they, within the Hadith they speak of it as five. Because they have taken the story in which that Muhammad rode on the Baruch, which is a white lightning um, beast. Which is also sperm. There you go. Why everyone have a white horse and the white, you know, this, you know. Right, and that's the sexual energy. The sperm or the yeah. eggs within man or woman is the sexual energy or sexual potency in which that you can raise Kundalini. Without sexual energy, you can't raise Kundalini. All right, this is why for some people, celibacy is good at a time, 
you know what I'm saying, or whatever the case is, to build up enough energy so that you can produce this raising effect within your body. This animal that he rode upon is called the Baruch, a white lightning animal. But that is the Kundalini. The color of the Kundalini is a mercury whitish color. That's what the brother is talking about. The white horse. All right. All right. And this, and this color, or this particular um, energy in this color, raises up through the seven chakras to the rock, which is the pineal gland. All right. The reason why they call it the rock is because when the pineal gland hits the pineal, uh, when the um, kundalini hits the pineal gland, you have that's kundalini sh um, shakti, and it hits kundalini shiva. That is our set, which is the kundalini raising up to go and meet her mate, divine mate, in which that she now come back in contact with, which is our soul, which is the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland. So when the, so when the um, energy of Kundalini hits the pineal gland, it produces a hardening, not a calcification hardening, but a hardening like a diamond, all right? Rihanna says, shine like a diamond. That's what she was talking about in a sense. We're talking about the pineal gland. That is the philosopher's stone that they've been looking for. Right? That's the philosopher's stone. So this hits. Now understand, around the pineal gland, this you have crystals throughout your body. You have 144,000 crystals in your body. All right? This particular crystal or crystals in the brain, there's about 72,000 of them. You have 72,000 near the kunta gland here in the body, and you have about 72,000 in the pineal gland, which makes 144,000. These 72,000 crystals on the pineal gland is magnetic, and what happens is that they're like sand particles, all right? When the pineal gland is not, um, is not calcified and when it has not yet been initiated. It's like sand. They've actually found sand. What seem to be sand. These are the crystal-like particles in the, in the pineal gland. Like sand. But when the Kundalini hits it, it solidifies and becomes like a diamond. This is the Emerald City. Alright? That is symbolic in the Book of Revelations. Alright? And remember, the Emerald City, this is the Kingdom of God. So really... That area in your brain is the kingdom of God and is activated also through the hippocampus area of the brain. The word hippocampus means white horse. No, co no, co no coincidence. That is the pegasus of the Greek mythology. Okay, I'm going to end it here and we're going to come back. I say. Peace. <laughs>